This episode of Velocity Labs, we're melting fans and failing repeatedly. All right, we are back from Willie's. We got uh, got the car home. We got everything uh, essentially done. We're about 90%. Uh, we still need to take care of a few cooling issues, uh, address the oil drain, get the wastegates hooked up, a few other things like that. But um, like with the, uh, the fans, for example, I was running one full-size stock fan and one slim fan, but that uh, there's no way the stock fans are gonna fit because this thing takes up a ton of room. Uh, so we're gonna have to go with two slim fans and possibly a pusher setup in it as well. Uh, I need to fix my intercooler piping because I didn't have my elbow that I was supposed to have with. Uh, so we just kind of cobbled something together uh, just to drive it home. So that needs to get addressed and hooked back up nice and snug. Uh, so I'll have to pull the bumper off to do that. Uh, we'll have to figure out the fan situation. And let's see, oil drain. Well, let's just go ahead and make a list here. All right, here's our to-do list. We only have one slim fan on the car right now and we'll definitely need two to keep the car cool in the summer. The lower intercooler piping needs new couplers and a bit of adjustment to make everything fit. The oil return needs a new hose. The wastegates aren't hooked up, so that needs to get done. There's no intake on the car and we may need bigger injectors. I have 1000 cc injectors on the car right now, but they might not be enough for this turbo. First up, let's take care of the oil drain. The hose I originally ordered wasn't flexible enough to make the bend required and uh, it ended up with a kink in it. So I ran to the car parts store and found a fairly flexible three-fourths oil hose. All right, so I went and got a, uh, a new piece of hose and a, uh, and a 90 degree connector. Although I didn't want to use a 90, I'd rather have a 45 because this seems like it's going to hurt flow a lot. Nobody had a 45. I ran all over town. Uh, went to hardware stores, went to car parts stores, nobody had a, a 45 degree three-fourths fitting. Um, so, but, hopefully, this hose is actually pretty flexible. I mean, I'm getting a little bit of a kink there, but not a lot. Hope, I, and I'm hoping I can get this on without the elbow. While I was at the car parts store, I also tried to find a 45 degree connector to help with the bend, but uh, no one in town had one. I went to like three or four different parts stores and uh, the only thing I could find was a 90 degree. But I'm gonna avoid using that if possible because I don't want to impede the oil flow that much. Luckily, the hose that I found at my local auto parts store was uh, flexible enough to make the curve without kinking. You can see the kink in the old hose here and uh, that's definitely not a good thing. So I hopped under the car, cut the hose to length, and it works perfectly. No more obstructing the flow of oil in the return line. Let's cross that one off. Oh, and if you're looking for more detailed information on oil setups for HX35s and then getting them working in a DSM, check out Clint's Garage. I have a link in the description. He has a ton of info on setting up the oil feed in the return, working with clearances, getting a boost source, cooling setups, and a bunch more stuff. Plus, his 1990 Eagle Talon TSI is a killer street machine. Just listen to this thing rip. Anyway, next we'll get to the intercooler piping. I didn't have the right elbow when it was time to leave Willie's shop, uh, so I had to make the one that I had work. So this elbow, this blue one, was meant to fit the J pipe, which is quite a bit smaller than the outlet on the HX35. So I had this extra two and a quarter, I think, coupler that we just coupled onto the outside. Uh, and because it was squeezing down so much, Willie cut off a piece of pipe to strengthen the inside of this so we could clamp it down tight enough so we wouldn't have any significant boost leaks on our way home. That's how we made that work. Now, let's go ahead and uh, put the proper size one back on. And they're a little sticky, so we're going to use the old uh, Jaffro mobile trick of using hairspray, which works amazing by the way. So just a little bit of hairspray on the inside of the coupler. Slides on nice and easy, and then dries sticky to help seal up any leaks. Oh, that's so much better. Anyway, I got the new two and a half inch elbow clamped down and then the intercooler piping arranged the way that I wanted, uh, which was the only way it fit by the way. So now it's time to move on to the cooling. 
All right, so first up, I ordered an extra slim fan off Amazon since the stock fan no longer fits. I did a quick test fit and it's going to be a very tight fit next to the turbine housing, but it will fit. Okay, good. This slim fan will fit. Uh, it's gonna be whew, pretty close to the manifold. Pretty close to the manifold, famous last words. But I assumed it was going to work, so I got the fans all wired up and ready to go. Oh, and I'm working on the floor here because I don't have a workbench, which is uh, not fun. But I built one in the middle of filming all this stuff, and uh, I did a quick video about it on my second channel here if you want to check it out. Anyway. All right, fans are all hooked up and ready to go. Got them all secured down. This one I ran out of the, the factory stuff, so I used uh, zip ties and washers, but works just as well. And uh, one more thing I need to do is nub down, did this one, uh, cut this one down, and then this one down too, because uh, the intercooler piping gets pretty close to those, and uh, just taking off that little extra will give me a lot more room to play around with, just give me a little bit more wiggle room when I'm down there. So I'm gonna take the, uh, the old cutoff wheel of death and uh, make these two look like this one. Anyway, I got both fans mounted and chopped off the lower mounting locations for the stock fan setup. Looks pretty good. So there's our results. Got a good, uh, another half an inch of clearance right there. And that's where we were running into issues with the intercooler piping. So that should help. Assuming that I didn't heat it up uh, enough to mess up the radiator or cause a leak when I was grinding it. Anyway, this is, uh, this is ready to go back in with the, uh, the two slim fans. Hopefully that'll keep me cool enough. This just gave me a bit more room for getting the radiator in and out, which I'll be doing a lot. Oh, and check out the wiring on this three-year-old fan. No reason that I pointed that out. Once I got the radiator in and the fans hooked up, I switched them on to make sure they were working. Oh, that's burning, shit. Yeah, remember those wires that I pointed out? The insulation was old and cracked, and once I started moving the fan around, the insulation completely failed and shorted the fan out. And not just the fan. After that, nothing was working, and my battery was dead to boot. So I brought in the Subaru to help get power to help troubleshoot. You know, it's kind of a shame uh, that I'm gonna be getting rid of the Subaru, because it's so reliable. It literally never breaks. Uh, but honestly, if I kept it, I'd start modding it and ruin the reliability of it anyway, so. I actually wasn't 100% sure what the problem was at this point, but uh, it became pretty obvious pretty quickly. All right, so now we have only the new fan hooked up. Fuck. All right, that didn't work, so let's try uh, direct current. Positive. Okay, fan works. Fan number one works. How about fan number two? Whoa, shit. Oh, these are definitely touching. That art. Motherfucker. Obviously the wrecked fan has to go, but the fan wiring in the car also wasn't working. Turns out it was just my fuse though. A big thanks to everyone at the DSM Tuners Forum. The amount of help that I get from there is immeasurable. So yeah, that fuse got smoked by the shorted fan. Luckily that fixed all the electrical issues that I was having with the fans. Uh, so I ordered up a new fan from Amazon and then got the radiator back in. I also got the wastegates hooked up and routed properly, but the, uh, the fit was pretty bad on these knockoffs. And uh, I ended up having to use tin foil as a filler just to get everything snugged up and fitting together properly. Um, yeah, it was uh, kind of a pain to put together to be honest. Once that was done, I drove the car to work and back, and, uh, and after just 60 miles, the fan had completely melted. All right, so here's the clearance that I'm talking about. So not only did it melt the wiring, oh, so not only did it melt the wiring that you can see, but you can see that all of this plastic here has started to melt. Like this is all melted, that's all melted, and you'll see it better once I get the fan out of here. So hopefully, the turbo blanket will, uh, kill enough of that heat that it's not gonna kill my fan. So radiator's coming out. Man, I can't imagine what the problem was. Oh, not to mention, 
I didn't notice that before, but uh, it is 100% seized. It Ow! Oh! Ah! Yeah, that's nice. Try that with gloves, maybe. All right, official diagnosis is I'm probably gonna die, so you may never see this footage. Uh, if I happen to survive this ordeal, I will make sure to upload this video. But I think chances of survival are slim. Anyway, so I ordered another fan from Amazon. Luckily, these things are only about 25 bucks. And uh, I also ordered a turbo blanket to try prevent this new fan from melting again. So there's my turbo diaper. All I gotta do is just pull that up there. There we go. Diaper installed. That, uh, that should fix our problem. Except it didn't fix our problem. All right, I just got back uh, from getting gas and took it out for a test run, and uh, it still melted the shit out of the top of the fan. Uh, you can see that shiny, shiny bit of plastic right there. I mean, it's just, it's hard to see because it's black, but it's, it's melted to shit. So that fan is toast. Unfortunately, the turbo blanket couldn't even fit between the turbo and the fans without touching the fan. That's how tight it is in there, and, uh, and it melted the fan anyway. I think there are two problems here. We're way too close to the turbo housing, and I think there's a suspected exhaust leak from the Chinese wastegate. Either way, I won't be able to have two puller fans in there, so I decided on trying out a fan shroud. So I made a custom shroud from scratch, and it worked amazingly well, actually when the car was in stop and go traffic. Uh, on the highway, however, it failed to keep the car cool as it just didn't allow for enough flow. I could have added some flapper doors and maybe made it work, but um, after I confirmed some exhaust leaks from the Chinese wastegates, I decided to go with real tiles and then uh, back to two fans. If you guys wanna see a full video on making a fan shroud, just let me know in the comments. All right, so I popped the radiator out of the way and uh, Part of the issue with these is I think they leak. Um, if you remember when I was putting them in, I actually had to add some aluminum foil just to get them to seal up even halfway decent. And this is as tight as it goes. And you can see. It's still loose. Uh, and that's, that's literally as tight as I can get it. Uh, another thing that makes me think that they're leaking is... Uh, this is the last place where the, uh, uh, I was noticing a heat problem on my fan. Obviously it didn't do any, uh, any major damage. But uh, that was right, uh, right down here. So it's like it was leaking and shooting down here. Uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and pop these, uh, these wastegates off. We're going to change them out to the real tiles and um, hopefully that'll take care of it. I couldn't afford two brand new tiles, but uh, I found a really good deal on a pair that had a blemish on one of them. So I picked those up for a good discount off the, uh, the new price. I got those installed and uh, I'm gonna do a short separate video about those, but they, uh, they took care of the exhaust leaks and uh, I also ducted my front mount intercooler to my radiator, which made a huge difference. I'll also be doing a separate video about that in the future, along with getting my AC working. All right, time to, yeah. All right, time to pop the radiator out one more time. Uh, hopefully one more time. I honestly can't even count how many times I've had the radiator in and out since having this turbo in. Uh, but I think we are almost there for figuring out the cooling uh, situation. I ducted the front of the radiator. You can see the ducting down in here. Um, so I have the inner cooler completely sealed to the AC condenser and then the AC condenser completely sealed to the radiator. Um, and that made a huge difference on uh, my highway temperatures. Unfortunately, traffic, city driving, uh, it's not even close to moving enough air because my cheap little $25 Amazon fan um, just isn't enough. Now that fan uh, was doing much better with the shroud that I had on there uh, that I made, but um, unfortunately that shroud uh, was too much of a hindrance on the highway. So we ended up uh, taking the shroud off, uh, so now, we're perfect on the highway, nice and cool, 
but not cool enough in town. Um, so what we're going to do is try to put a really high CFM fan, so either a spell, which I know will fit, um, or what we just picked up from the junkyard, which is, I got this suggestion from a guy on Instagram, and apparently these fans are really popular with uh, Jeep and off-road guys. They are, um, it's the Ford Taurus or uh, Volvo wagon fans. The Volvo ones are the better ones because they're two speeds and they come with a wiring harness and everything. And uh, they're pretty slim and they move an absolute shit ton of air. So we're gonna try and make one of those fit. I think it's 14 inches, so it's obviously not gonna fit perfect because the a 12, I think the most amount of room that we have on the radiator is 13 inches. So it's gonna hang over one of the edges but um, with any luck, we'll be able to make it fit. It's gonna be a tight squeeze though, so. Unfortunately, we couldn't make those fit. For some reason, I had thought that they were 14 inch fans, but uh, turns out they're like 19 inches across. So yeah, there was just no way to make those work in a DSM. They are slim though, so uh, I'm gonna keep one of these around for maybe a future project. So I decided to try one more time to fit a second puller fan. And after a bunch of help from DSM tuners again, I was convinced to spend the money on a good quality fan, as the cheap eBay Amazon ones don't pull nearly the same CFM as a, a good spell fan. And even though I had fixed the exhaust leaks, for the second fan I went with a cheap eBay fan again because there's still a chance that the radiant heat is going to melt it. And I'd rather melt a $20 fan than a $100 fan. I also went with a little smaller fan this time to try keep it as far away from the turbo as possible drive to work and back, and it melted anyway. Although not nearly as bad as before. All right, drove the car to work today and uh, we are still noticing signs of the fan melting. Uh, way, not even close to as fast as it was before with the cheap uh, eBay wastegates. So those were definitely leaking. These ones seem to be not leaking at all. I've checked, double checked for exhaust leaks and there aren't any exhaust leaks, um, but there's still evidence of, uh, of slight melting around the fan, which means it's not gonna last. Uh, lasted a lot longer than the other ones, but um, yeah, it's just, uh, there's no way that it's gonna go through a whole bunch of heat cycles and, and survive. So we're pulling the radiator again, and um, we're gonna pull out, uh, we're gonna get rid of that fan. I'm just not gonna be able to run a polar fan on that side, there's just no way, it's just, way too hot. So I went ahead and added a pusher fan, sealed it back up, and then in conjunction with all the ducting and the quality spal puller fan, everything was working beautifully. I also heat wrapped the downpipe as well while it was in there, and I definitely think that helped a lot as well with the temperatures. Like I mentioned before, I'm going to cover the cooling and AC setup in a future video, so keep an eye out for that. But for now, it's working great. All that's left now is to install the intake. This was pretty easy. The hardest part was waiting for it to arrive in the mail. After a quick test fit, it's obvious that it's gonna be a little bit too big. So I grabbed the old Sawzall and chopped it down. I took a little off at first, then I took a bigger chunk, and then uh, a couple smaller chunks until it was perfect. It pushes the lower radiator hose back a little bit, so I double checked to make sure that it wasn't going to interfere with my shift linkage. And, uh, and it all works fine, so we're good to go. The last thing that we need to do is get rid of the catalytic converter. Prolonged excessive back pressure is what killed my last turbo, so we're not taking any chances here. So it's back to Willie's shop to cut it out. We're simply adding in a three inch section of straight pipe where the catalytic converter used to be. And we're using V-bands to secure it in place so I can easily swap the cat back in when it's time to pass emissions. I was completely spoiled by the lift here. I really need to get my own space and a lift. It made this job an absolute breeze. The car is running amazing now. It's staying nice and cool. The wastegates are functioning as they should, so uh, let's take this thing for a rip. All right, it is uh, really nice out. It's about 80 degrees in Denver today, and the uh, car's running great. It's nice and cool. I haven't seen temps over 210. I don't have my uh, laptop hooked up, but my check engine light comes out at 210 and it hasn't hit that yet. So we are running nice and cool. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, do a couple little rips here, show you guys what the uh, the turbo sounds like now, now that I have the intake on the car, cause uh, it's amazing. The uh, You can still hear it spool up really well, but uh, the blow off valve and the turbulence in the intake sounds really good. 
Finally got the intake installed, got everything tuned. It's running great, so I uh, can't wait to show you guys what this sounds like. In fact, I don't know if you're hearing the uh, the turbo on the blow-off valve right there, but uh, man, I love it. I can't get enough of it. And this thing pulls hard. With the uh, the TDO 520G that I had on the car, um, I was about 370-ish at the wheels for horsepower. I don't know what we're at now because I haven't dynoed it yet. We definitely will, but I haven't got to it yet. I haven't gotten to the track yet, but we are definitely over 400 horsepower. We might be close to five, because um, this thing moves. Got some nice twisties here. <laughs> uh, I, can, I can do that all day. <laughs> Every time I get in my car and I go to work, which nobody likes driving to work. I love it. I love getting on on-ramps. It's uh, a smile on my face every morning. This thing pulls so hard. I'll, uh, I'll set the camera up outside here. Let you guys, uh, I'll do a couple drive-bys. I wish I could take you guys for a ride because it's insane. It spools so fast. Uh, especially after I got the, the cat, the catalytic converter out of the car. Uh, it spooled up way quicker. It's spooling up way quicker than it did before. A couple cars ahead of me. Alright, we'll get a couple drive-bys here. The wastegates in particular, when uh, when those open up and it just starts screaming, uh, it's such a great sound. U-turn, which is going to be a three-point, because anybody that's driven a 1G DSM, knows the turning radius is absolutely garbage. Oh, there's a car. I'm not sure what these other cars are doing on my private closed course, but uh, I'm gonna have to gate this off better. Waiting, 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 waiting. All right, I think that should be good. <laughs> oh, you can hear it better with the windows down. Should have had them cracked the first time. Right, where was my tripod? There it is. <laughs> oh, I think that was a good one. So yeah, this thing looks, sounds, and feels amazing. I couldn't be happier. The injector duty is a little high though, so we'll swap those out in a future episode. I'll also be doing a cooling and air conditioning episode, a wastegate specific video, and, uh, and up next we'll be upgrading the springs on our Megan coilovers. After that, we're gonna hit the dyno and the drag strip, so stay tuned for those. If you have any questions or there's anything specifically you wanna see with this car, just post them up in the comments.